It's time for Book Show Book Show with your host, the irascible yet easily influenced Danny Marks. Hit it, Danny! On this episode of Book Show Book Show, you can expect... I don't know what you can expect. I'm just going to wing it. I actually script all these things out completely. No. I will tell you this. There'll be a reappearance from an old friend of Book Show Book Show, as well as a giveaway. I'm going to start doing that from time to time, so you never know when it's going to happen. One of the books that I'm going to recommend this week will be a giveaway book. So we probably should get started. I will tell you this. There was not really a theme to Book Show Book Show this week. I was reading primarily new books. So that's what you're going to get. You're going to get some new type recommendations, I guess. And one that everyone's probably already read. So what's the point? First up, and with straight to classic status, The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. If you weren't expecting that one, I don't know. I don't know where you've been. Really. We owe John Green a debt of gratitude for giving us a cancer book that we can laugh at. And also fugly cry with. I was hideous. Page 205. Midway. That's about where the fugly began. And then on and off for the rest of the book. Uh, I can't... I, I... There's no sense. I can't recreate it. The fugly cry is somewhere between the beginning of a vomit-like expression and the chicken dance. So, um, yeah. But I would give The Fault in Our Stars by John Green the bare minimum of five fugly cries, which really beats five amputated legs or five missing eyeballs. What I really love about the book is that it takes, it takes you inside the sort of callous place you can get with your own disease and, and with, with dealing with cancer and death and dying and um, how that grief process is different for everybody. And I think that it's, it's really refreshing to look at a book that takes, in turns, a lighthearted look at it, as well as goes right to a very emotional place and is unapologetic about it. I loved it. I did. I have no other words. So as I'm going through my list of books I want to tell you about, I realize that I read most of them on my neck. So yeah, the next one is this one. Robin Bridges' The Gathering Storm. I read this one quite a while back. Actually, I read it on a boat bound for Mexico, and I didn't end up with my head in a bucket. So cruises aren't all bad. I did gain 10 pounds from that cruise, though. If you're not aware of what The Gathering Storm is about, it's a historical paranormal set in Russia and amongst the czarist family and um, involving vampires and zombies and witches and stuff, and it's awesome. Those Russian names are a little tricky to get your tongue around, though. Unlike my Girl Scout cookies that came this week. Finally. And this is me getting all critique -y. Bridges weaves a rich tapestry of debutante balls and imperial summer houses and dead people. Which is, you know. I'm going to give The Gathering Storm five vampiric princes. Next up on the shoe is Megan Miranda's Fracture. Seen here? I have to say, I was a little thrown off at the beginning of this book for some very obvious reasons, which I'll tell you about. Story starts, the main character, Delaney, is in a coma and uh, after an accident, and it's very scary. It is. Uh, and I think that it was particularly scary and sort of gut-wrenching for me to get through this opening piece because just a year ago, actually a year ago this month-ish, um, my own goddaughter, also named Delaney, was in a coma for like a week. It was really scary. So, um, yeah, it was like I kept reading it and it was like jarring me and eh, whatever. Because what happened is, is that I... I forgot all about it after a few pages the writing is great it's 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 sort of a mystery it has a vaguely paranormal feel to it but um, the paranormal element is very very slight which is reminiscent of books like uh, please ignore Vera Deeds by A.S. King who um, utilizes it more as sort of a plot turning device rather than the entire premise of the book and that specific premise what I'm referring to is uh, Delaney wakes up with an ability to uh, know when, know when, how, everything about how someone's going to die. 
it doesn't seem to have much of a purpose to her. And uh, it becomes very, very frustrating until she meets a boy who can do the same exact thing. And then things go crazy, as they do when boys are involved. The tone of the book is really dark, but the climax is super exciting and very visual. I think there's a cinematic feel to Fracture that lends itself to film, and I hope to see it on the big screen one day. Or little screen. Whichever. So for all those reasons, I, I think Fracture was a pretty thrilling read for me, and I give it five cracks in the ice. You don't like to be on camera, do you? No. That was Lindsay. She's a little camera shy. What can you do? Except, of course, force her to be on camera. So next book... Oh, hold on a second. I'll be right back. Psst! Camera! Camera! That's right. Come here. Come to me, camera. Come. A little bit lower. Ah, good. I thought while Danny was away taking a crap or whatever he does when he leaves this office, that I'd talk about a few books that I like. Namely, Slide by Jill Hathaway. Seen here. It is a lovely cover. Looks quite a bit like an acid trip I had once. Slide is about this horrible girl who can project her mind and consciousness into the mind of a killer while we're working. It's not okay. I need privacy to work effectively. Privacy! Hathaway's book is very tense, and it's a murder mystery. And you know how I like murders. <laughs> Hathaway's tight thriller will have you turning pages until it's time to get out and kill some people your own self. And it kept me guessing right up until the very end. Ah, oh, crap. Here he comes. What was going on in here? Gabriella, were you talking to the nice people? No. She's right about Slide, though. It's fantastic. But every once in a while, I have this lingering feeling that the main character was having some kind of an aneurysm. That could just be my thing, though. I give it five aneurysms. Moving on. Which brings us to this episode's giveaway, which is Starters by Lissa Price. But because looking at a cover on a black and white nook is about as visually stimulating as your neighbor's kids' pictures on their refrigerator, I think I better show you the actual cover JPEG there. Fantastic, right? White on white with that spot of blue makes you want to pluck the eye out. No, it doesn't. That Only a crazy person would want to do that. In a nutshell, Starters is about a dystopian society decimated by war where the basically the only people that are living are the very young, the starters, or the very old, those are the enders. And this corporation has devised a way to implant a chip into young people's heads so that old people can kind of take over their bodies and sort of puppet them around and act like they're young and fresh again. <laughs> like we all want to do. Watch out, teens. It's really fast-paced and fun and disturbing and asks some really interesting questions about morality. And yeah, it's thrilling. Starters is a really interesting flip on the idea of demonic possession. Only instead of Satan, your kid's body is going to get possessed by grandma. And for all those reasons, I give Starters by Lissa Price five elderly kisses. But like I said, this is the giveaway. So let's talk about that. We're going to limit it to American contest entries only. All you need to do is leave a comment in the comment thread and we'll randomly choose you at some point. What's cool about this is that Lissa has agreed to personalize the, it's a finished copy, not an art. And so leave something in there about what you want her to write and we'll get that done and off to you as soon. The book comes out on Tuesday, so I bet she's got her off. I don't know. I'm just blathering on and on about it.